Welcome to Retail Global eBay Digital Day. And you're lucky we have a great lineup of speakers for you today. All sessions will be recorded, so if you miss anything, you can go back and catch up via our recorded videos. Thanks to our partners that make these events free for you to attend, especially our major partner, Afterpay. Also too, our longtime partners, Channel Advisor, Payoneer, Shelf Trend, National Storage, and of course, our good friends at eBay Australia. Today, we have over 1,800 people register from Australia and around the world with all sizes of retailers, from startups to multi-channel enterprise retailers. I started Retail Global over 15 years ago when I was the number one seller on eBay. And people asked me what the key to my success was. And my answer was simple, attending conferences and exhibitions and learning from others. Our aim is simple, provide you with access to the best information and people to help you sell more online. We do what we do because we understand its vital role to the marketplace. And we will continue our digital events and hope you can join us, of course, in our next in-person event scheduled for the 29th to the 31st of March on the Gold Coast in 2021. Today will just be a taste of the amazing content we offer at our live conferences across five streams of content. We thank you for joining us and we hope you'll be on the Gold Coast in March to keep these in industry events thriving and our e-commerce community going in the right direction. These events are free thanks to our sponsors, as I've just said. However, if you'd like to help us with our Frontliners initiative, which has helped deliver over $2 million worth of products to over 120,000 health workers across Australia in our first 100 days. A $25 contribution will help us deliver 50 Frontliner kits to our health professionals. And if you want more information on that, please go to Frontliners .com.au. Um, the team and I are based in Melbourne. I can tell you that the system is starting to show signs of fatigue and stress due to the number of health workers contracting this disease. Your help will be greatly appreciated. But let's go to our first speaker of today, and you can't get much better than this. Tim McKinnon, Managing Director and Vice President of eBay Australia and New Zealand. I've known Tim for close to 10 years and I've witnessed his rise up the chain of command at eBay Australia. Tim's early years at eBay were seller face roles, including senior director of retailer growth before moving into a CMO role prior to becoming managing director some three years ago. We are lucky to have an Australian lead eBay who has had so much experience on the seller side. Tim's going to walk you through some of eBay's uh, current state of the Australian market and how shifts in consumer behavior in 2020 are presenting new and exciting opportunities for the future of e-commerce e in Australia. Now, please, during the uh, session, if you've got any questions for Tim, please, uh, please put those in the question box and Tim will answer those questions following his presentation. Welcome, Tim. Just need to unmute. Thank you so much, Phil. Um, morning, everybody across Australia. Uh, I'm actually dialing in from home. Uh, I've got two kids at school, which is good. I have one four-year-old in the house. Uh, if you've got great audio, you'll probably hear her at various points, and I'm hoping this virtual background will um, stop you from seeing her come in. Uh, it's amazing. I've been working at home for six months, um, although going to the office occasionally, we've, we've reopened the office. It's amazing after six months that uh, our little ones don't really understand the difference between work and, uh, and home life. And I guess they're like the rest of us. We're all, we're all struggling with this. I think one of the things that, that we're all facing at the moment is that things aren't just gonna snap back to the way they were earlier. I was just chatting to Phil um, just before we came on and he, he said, oh, you're seeing an increase in sales in Victoria. And I said, yes, 
But I think one of the interesting thing to me is, is that across the country, we're running a giant AB test at the moment. We have, of course, Victoria, uh, but then we have a bunch of states where there's no cases and things are in many ways back to normal. Uh, retail and restaurants and everything are open. In my home state of Western Australia, uh, even nightclubs are open there. Um, I don't know if many people go to nightclubs they, in, in WA. They, they never were the best nightclubs in Australia. But things have gone back to normal. Um, and when I look at the daily numbers and I look at all the, those states, which is more than half the country, online is still continuing to grow at a rate uh, that is much higher than we saw before COVID. Much higher. So we all saw online surge during the first wave, but I think we're seeing evidence that when this new reality, that online is not going to retreat. And I talked actually at Retail Global a few months ago, and I said what many people say, the world hasn't changed. What has happened is we've seen the trends of recent years just accelerate. And so trends don't tend to snap back to the way they were. I'm gonna talk through some of those trends. I might adjust my screen is, there we go, thank you. Uh, so we've seen six big accelerations. We've seen acceleration towards online shopping. We've seen acceleration towards domestic Australian sellers. We've seen an acceleration to marketplaces. We've seen an acceleration in the proliferation of payment options. We continue to see prices important and we've seen challenges around logistics. I'm not going to talk about the acceleration to online. I think this Australian Bureau of Statistics chart kind of says it all. But I think the more interesting thing is when you look at it broken down by domestic in red versus international in black, you can see that Australian retailers have enjoyed the surge in sales more than overseas retailers in Australia. Now, this trend was going on. Actually, you can see that the red was surging ahead of the black in the last couple of years um, with the weaker Australian dollar uh, and also the GST uh, on online um, imports. And we think that this trend is here to stay. If you think about all of the global supply chain issues, the limited international travel, potential trade wars, plus a growing sentiment from Australians that we need to make more stuff in Australia, that we need to buy more stuff locally, that we need to support Australian businesses. We think that this is a, a trend that's not going to retreat. We've seen an acceleration to marketplaces across all marketplaces, but some a little bit more than others. Um, and one of the things, that I'd say is that trend is not going to change. That's been a trend that's been happening for many years. Marketplaces have been growing and taking share. And as we see Australians use online for all their retail needs, it's not surprising that Australians who are used to going to shopping centres, to go to one place for all the things that they need, are now going to one app or one website to get all of the things that they need. As I mentioned, we've seen a proliferation in different payment options. And if you look at the share prices uh, of some of the Australian based um, uh, buy now, pay later providers, the market doesn't think that's going to change anytime soon. We, we ask our consumers um, regularly what matters to them. And they always say that price matters and free shipping is second, which is really just a form of price and then great selection is third. Um, we think that people, Australians, are going to pay even more attention. The survey data says they're going to pay more attention to price, particularly after September as JobKeeper uh, gets tightened. And we have seen uh, during the first wave, um, you know, a real challenge to a logistics system as we, without, with less international travel and less, uh, with less international flights, but also um, less domestic flights, it, it, we have seen more late deliveries. That has improved, but Australia is still 
um, we still have a late delivery rate that is higher than other markets. And um, with all of the new consumers coming on, Lion Australia Post said there's around half a million first time shoppers. It's critical that we continue to deliver great experiences, that we track our parcels and we get them out the door as quickly as possible. So what does all this mean? Well, during the GFC, uh, we saw online penetration in Australia um, go from 2% to 5%. In the last six years, it's increased by six point and UBS and other experts are saying it's gonna to get to 17% in the next few years. Many are predicting much higher than that. Uh, some are saying it's gonna to get to 24% online penetration. Um, and, and based on what I'm seeing, I, I'm, I remain very bullish about the fact that this trend towards online, towards marketplaces, towards domestic Australian retail, retailers uh, is not going to change. So what does that mean for you? It means more opportunities, but it also means competition. So what should you do? Well, my list of things that you should do is the same list as a couple of years ago. Because as I said, these trends have been existing for some time. And it's just that the things that you put off doing last year are now critical. So to take advantage of the surge in online, uh, the, the surge towards domestic retailers and the surge in marketplaces, the first thing that you should do is make sure that you have 100% of your inventory across all your channels. If you're running an offline store, you need to get all of your products, all of the data, all of the images up on your website. And if you're running a website, you need to make sure you put all of that inventory onto marketplace. Today, um, eBay sellers, around one in three, don't have all their inventory up on eBay. Now, there's no reason not to do that. For managed payments, we've actually removed all the insertion fees. So there's no cost to putting inventory up. And also the tools and the plugins between websites and eBay, whether you use some of the middleware, and, and I know channel advisors are later, but there's many other providers, um, or you're using the plugins to Shopify and big commerce. It is easy to put all your inventory up in an automated way on eBay. Secondly, uh, once you have all the inventory up, it's critical that you get seen. And to try to get to the top of search, you need to think about eBay SEO. And that's basically around having more structured data. Make sure that you complete all of the item specifics and aspects, because that's the way that consumers are gonna find you and use tools like promoted listings to get to the top and get some sales history on your products. Thirdly, on managed payments, um, on payments, um, you can continue to add payment options on your own website, but for your eBay business, if you haven't done so already, register for managed payments. We, it's, it's now live, um, and if you get managed payments on your listing and we're progressively going to be um, taking all of our registered sellers and turning on managed payments for them. They'll be able to take Apple Pay and Afterpay and Google Pay. On price, eBay has lots of promotional tools, lots of ways of offering discount, discounts to consumers. Um, but we also, in eBay Australia, run big coupon events with our sellers. Um, so get involved in those. And on logistics, uh, as I said, it's critical that we deliver great experiences, and that means delivering, making sure you track and upload tracking on every item, that you have zero to one day handling, and you offer free shipping. And if you do all of those things, you'll get a plus badge um, that will give you an increase in sales. So I, I realize there's a lot on uh, sellers and retailers at the moment, a lot. Um, a lot that you guys, there's a lot of retailers that are struggling with their offline channels. There are a lot of retailers that are doing well online, but just got so much going on. We're all working very hard. Um, and it is a partnership. So the question is, what is eBay doing to support you at this time? Well, firstly, um, and I hope you've noticed this, we've invested very heavily in marketing to drive more traffic 
to your eBay stores. Um, I hope you've seen our TV ads uh, and I hope that you're enjoying an, an uplift in sales. Secondly, around domestic sellers, we've launched a partnership with Australian Made. Um, so you, we have a destination for Australian Made products and the ability to use the Australian Made logo on listings. If you have Australian Made product and you want to get involved in that, go to the eBay Seller Centre. Thirdly, we're giving more fee support. So I mentioned before for existing sellers, if you've gone to manage payments, we have no insertion fees anymore. On top of that, we're running a lot of different promotions to help you uh, to get into eBay Plus um, and giving some free advertising for eBay Plus listings. Um, for people who are not on eBay, uh, we have extended our always open offer where we're giving three months absolutely no fees for new sellers for new businesses coming on we've extended that until the end of the year so if you are watching this and you're not on ebay um, and you're not reaching the two and three australians that shop on ebay then this is a great time to try it out uh, there'll be absolutely no cost for the first few months i mentioned managed payments um, and we're offering that and we as we've got the partnership with afterpay which we've launched so we're giving you access to Afterpay customers and Afterpay increased velocity um, under, your, under your eBay fees. And then uh, we continue to invest in promotions and promoting deals for our retailers um, as, and, and continue to make sure we're delivering value for Australian consumers. I wanna spend a moment on the last one, number six. So what are we doing with logistics constraints? So firstly, we have been protecting our sellers and maintaining their standards around late deliveries. Um, we have not been penalizing you for challenges in the system. And one thing we also have been doing is really cracking down on item location misrepresentation. Um, we have kicked off tens of thousands of sellers um, you know, particular China, particularly Chinese sellers that have been saying that the, an item is located in Australia when it is not. Um, we're really cracking down to make sure we're delivering great experiences and getting items to Australians on time. And as I said, um, if you use zero to one day handling, you add tracking um, and you do free shipping, then you'll become eligible for eBay Plus and we will fund the cost of an express delivery eBay Plus customers, um, and we're, we are subsidizing that cost. And so you can get your items to customers even faster. Now I'm starting to touch on some of the content that's gonna come later in the day. We've got some fantastic eBay people on the team who are gonna talk about eBay Plus and how to get involved in that, talk about managed payments, talk about uh, the panels on how to improve um, your performance of your eBay listings, so I won't steal their thunder. Um, what I just wanted to do actually, uh, as, as Phil said, was really um, do a couple of things. One, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, thank you, you know, Australia really turned to eBay during the first wave. Um, as I mentioned, two in three Australians shop on the site and eBay is not a retailer. Um, we're a marketplace. We're the only marketplace in Australia uh, that is not a retailer. We don't compete with our sellers. So we rely on you to serve the customers that come to eBay. And you guys delivered, I think literally, um, but you played a huge role in making sure that Australians could get the things that they, they need and love um, during these difficult times. And um, so I wanted to say thank you for that. And as I said before, when we're seeing all these new customers come online, shopping online for the first time, we both have a responsibility to continue to ensure that we deliver great experiences on, to our customers and continue to improve the way that we, uh, that we ship and track and get uh, products to the customers quickly. Um, as I said, it is a partnership um, and, you know, as whilst we don't compete with you, we're the only marketplace that doesn't compete with you, it doesn't mean we can't do things better. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. 
and you know, I really am interested to answer your questions and also, um, you know, take suggestions on how we can do things better. Um, so I'm going to open it up, Phil, um, to, to questions now uh, and, and do that for the next 20 minutes. Right. Tim, um, can you give us a little bit more detail about the Australian Made program? Because I know um, from, from hearing on the news uh, and data tells us that people really want to buy Australian Made and support the country, especially during these times of COVID. What, uh, how does that look on eBay? Um, is there a section for just Australian made or is it badges? What, can you explain that a bit better? Yeah, 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 exactly right. I mean, as I said before, there's a real, really strong consumer sentiment around wanting to buy Australian made product. Um, and we actually saw that this come through at various moments that people during bushfires want to support but uh, retailers from particular reasons. Australians really want to support their local retailers. So what we're doing is uh, we have a dedicated section of all Australian made product. Uh, so we've created uh, that and we're driving traffic towards that section. So if people just want to buy only Australian made, they can do that on eBay and just search and, and, and find that within eBay. Secondly, we are authorizing sellers to use the Australian made badge. So we, we've, we've got an arrangement with the Australian made to use the logo. Um, so you can put that on your listings um, to make sure that people can see you within normal search what Australian made product is. Now that's just the beginning. We're working with Australian made to bring on more Australian made retailers and help to give them access to traffic. And we're going to focus on how we help Australian made, made retailers get more traffic from overseas and, and ex, um, export. We're going to do more events together and, um, and hopefully, you know, really drive uh, the performance of Australian made retailers at this time. That's a, that's a great initiative and uh, very timely, Tim. Um, I've got a question from Bill H. Um, how and when would eBay manage payments to provide average sellers with similar assistance as PayPal Working Capital. So PayPal, of course, offers yes. working capital via their portal where sellers can borrow some money and pay it back through the PayPal system. Are there any plans to help and assist sellers with, uh, with some capital? Yeah, Bill, great question. Um, we're always looking at ways we can support our merchants and that is certainly something that we're, that we're looking at. Um, it's not something I can say we, 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 uh, uh, I can tell you now exactly when that's going to happen. You know, I will say one thing on payments. We have been through a huge effort um, to launch managed payments. It just launched last week to actually change eBay so that um, eBay is intermediating the payment versus PayPal. That's a big thing for us. But we're actually, and there's lots of good things that have come out of the box with that. I mentioned Afterpay and Apple Pay and Google Pay, but there's lots more coming. Um, we're just getting started in payments. So Bill, uh, I'll take your question as feedback and, and I'll use it to, to, um, to, to try and move even faster in this space. Excellent. Seraphin uh, writes, um, the main question I have is eBay store owners being allowed to list their phone in their listings so that customers and buyers can ring and ask questions. This was stopped some years back and my sales fell off a cliff. Geez, I think it was a few years ago that you took um, phone numbers off listings. Are there any plans to bring back that as a uh, touch point for sellers? Yeah, look, I hear this. I, I, um, we've actually been having a big conversation around this. It's like, how do we do a better job of building the brands um, of, of our retailers on the site and also making uh, consumers understand that they're buying from a shop that has an address that they can contact. Um, we, this is something, and again, I'll take that. That is great feedback that we are talking about how we, we bring that to life. Again, I can't say, Hey, on X date, we're going to enable this functionality. But what we do recognize is that we have to, um, whilst, managing the experience of customers provide more ways for them to connect with your business. Um, and, and, uh, again, I'll, I'll take that as feedback and, 
and see what we can do uh, faster in that space. Okay. Adriano asks, why not give good incentives to long-time members? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So um, there are some things that we do to help long-time members. Um, so, of course, like the top-rated seller program and the ways that we look uh, at protecting sellers. So your tenure and history on eBay matters. Um, but again, we can do more there. And I'm going to take that for the team is what can we do um, to provide more additional rewards for long-time sellers? Um, we've talked actually about giving eBay Plus membership to a lot of sellers. So I'll take that as feedback. We, we do you know, give shipping supplies and things to some of our uh, more tenured sellers, but um, it's great feedback. Excellent. Um, Lisa says, I have on numerous occasions asked what is needed to get eBay Plus logo as a seller. I've been advised by eBay staff that I've met all criteria. Criteria, However, I've also been told on different occasions that it's luck of the draw who gets the eBay Plus logo as a seller. I do not understand as it provides unfair advantage to sellers who are lucky enough to get the eBay Plus logo. I can't get any assistance with this and they keep getting sent back to the link on the website, which is not helpful. Mm. Well, it's not luck of the draw. There are particular things that you need to do and we've got a whole session on that later. You need to um, upload tracking on, all, on the listings, be able to ship it out the same or the next day, offer free postage, have a reasonably priced express postage option. Um, these are all the things to do and be um, a, above standard or, or top rated seller. Um, so look, um, you can email me, team McKinnon at ebay.com um, if you want, uh, and we can look into your particular case. I don't understand why that's happening. Of course, you know, it, it is a huge piece of software and we can have bugs occasionally, but please give us the details and we'll look into that. But it's, it is not luck of the draw. Um, you know, we have a very uh, clear criteria for getting eBay Plus badge. Yeah, and let's uh, make sure you tune in for that eBay Plus session. I think there was some great information in that. Um, Q Lim writes, and I think I know the answer to this, is adding a watermark to photos affect listings ranking position? And the answer would be, yes, it does. Can you um, elaborate on that, Tim? Yeah, so, so we have guidance around watermarks and graffiti um, that, you know, we, we, we encourage, um, you know, clean images and we, we see a greater uplift with clean images. Um, but there is, you are allowed very subtle watermarks um, and, um, but, uh, and, and I, I, you know, I will say there's a, there's a lot of things that go into the search algorithm. Um, and uh, the, the quality um, of images, and that's not just about whether you have a watermark, but the, the resolution, um, you know, these are all uh, things that can be picked up um, by search. Um, another question from Tracy on eBay Plus, but Tracy, I'll defer you to the eBay Plus session. I think it's probably um, better to uh, get in there and we'll get the questions answered then. Um, what, Okay, what resources, Tim, would you recommend to find out more about eBay SEO? Um, is there any outside third parties who are experts in this or are there eBay resources available um, where the uh, seller can go and find out more on eBay SEO? Yeah, I mean, look, we've got a session later on. There's a panel on how, on how to rank the listings. So Ian Bentham from our team is going to be on that. Um, he's, he's worked with a lot of sellers to help drive their business on eBay. Um, we have a seller center uh, that you can look at um, with tips. But as I said, like, you know, basics matter here. Um, there's not like all these hidden tricks. So the basic things is make sure you have really good data in your listings, as in all the item specifics and all the keywords that people could possibly search in your item specifics and your title. Make sure that you do things like eBay Plus 
um, because that will help you convert faster. Fundamentally, if you think about search on eBay, is it's really about for everybody who sees your item, how many people are buying it? Um, and, and think about all the things that drive people to buy. So you've got to make sure that you turn up in the recall set that you're found, and that means you have to have good data. But after that, it's all the things that make people want to buy. It's, it's good uh, providing good delivery experiences, fast delivery. It's having sharp prices. It's using promotions that can make people convert faster. Um, there is not you know, some magical formula. It's about doing the, the, the basic things uh, very well. So it must be a lot, a lot of data points in regards to uh, search. How important is the title though, Tim? You know, is, how many characters can you get in there now for the title? It's been a few years since I've been selling. I think it used to be 55, but I'm not quite you know, sure. You've got me up. Uh, look got you on that one. So, but the, what I would say is the title has been important, but the item specifics are becoming more important. So, when search, uh, it looks at a number of things. Title is one, but the, the structured item specifics, the aspects is the other. So if you've got something in your aspects and item specifics, um, that's really critical. And you know, we, we are kind of gently, uh, we, we now have in the seller hub, you can go and look at your listings and it tells you where you're missing item specifics. That's the other thing I would, I would encourage you to use that, that seller hub, it's got so much information and data and analytics you can do in your listings to see um, how to, how to uh, get them up in search. But one of them is around item specifics and it'll tell you the item specifics that you're missing. And that's a, a really critical thing that, um, that search looks at, but also buyers use. So think about it. if you don't have the color of your item, like say the color of your iPhone, rose gold or, or whatever it is in, the item specifics and someone on the left hand nav goes and clicks rose gold if you don't have that in there you just drop out of search oh. so that's that's why it's really critical think about when you shop how often you use the left hand nav and and when you might be dropping out of search completely because you haven't got that information for buyers right um anonymous rights and I've, there's a few like this. Um, with COVID postage times having been massively effective, I've had several list in, listings that have massively delayed and they were funded by eBay even though the item was not lost and still on the way to the buyer. Your default response are wrong for the current environment and some eBay staff have been unhelpful. I personally have lost quite a bit of money to this policy. Have you done any adjustments to the settings during this time? And, um, and what, what, can, what can sellers do to mitigate, um, you know, getting these defects for, uh, for late delivery during this time? Yeah, um, that's a, it's a great question. So look, we have, we did, uh, we have lent in to make sure um, that when things are getting really delayed, that buyers, um, that, that, that we're protecting our buyers. The reality is that buyers, unfortunately, even though there are things beyond the control of sellers, they don't give us a free pass on this. Um, and so for, for a buyer, if something's late uh, and they can't see when it's going to arrive, um, that's a big issue. We're actually really looking at this right now. And in the next seller update, we'll have more to say about it. But what I would say is, um, is the fundamental thing is to do is to use tracking and if you use tracking and you show that you shipped it out um, then that that is the most important thing and in, in a way in which um, eBay can protect the sellers against these claims so I'll take that as feedback I think they that you know in our effort to try to make things right for customers you know, sometimes um, we can uh, create circumstances for sellers that, that, that they see as unfair. But as I said, the most important thing is tracking. And, um, and we're going to use that as the, as the, as the measure of, um, of, of, of fairness, and making sure we have that objective data. And so defects are annoying for sellers, of course, but is there anything they can do, um, especially during this time, maybe upping up the communications to uh, customers to let them know that, that 
uh, shipping may be delayed um, and that, uh, that it's out of their hands per se. Is that something you suggest? Yeah, look, um, I mean, as I said, the most important thing is tracking because then we, we send those notifications to the customer and say, hey, it's been shipped out. And once they receive that, you know, if you think about shopping and we like analyze the journey of trust in shopping, that the, the period after someone buys an item, they go into this kind of funk where they're worried about whether they're going to get the item and they have a little bit of buyer's remorse. And it's really critical during that period to reassure customers that, Hey, we've, that, 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 um, we've got everything under control. And that, that's kind of my suggestion for both your own site, that that communication after purchase is really critical. For us, when you give us a tracking number, we send out notifications at all the critical events. And, and we also have on our tracking page saying, hey, things are delayed with COVID. We've increased our delivery estimates. We've added more days to that um, to take account for COVID. We are actually seeing at the moment that, um, you know, the highest ever delivery within our estimated delivery dates, um, because we had been more conservative in our estimates to consumers. But we, we um, but, you know, as I said, tracking is the most critical thing to do here. Yeah. So, um, Tim, from another user, are you looking to offer any more alternative buy now, pay later options? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, uh, I don't know whether that came from a user or one of the buy now, pay later. <laughs> Probably Larry from ZipPay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, look, as I said, we're just getting started on payments. So, um, you know, like we're really excited about Afterpay. Um, it's been a great partnership. Um, we've seen, you know, a huge uptake from consumers. We've seen um, sales increases for our merchants. So, um, you know, we're, we're very focused on that partnership at the moment. But um, we uh, we are just getting started. Yeah, uh, this one uh, from Australian News. Uh, what exactly are you doing to crack down on location misrepresentation? Because one can open any page for any product and the misrep is very clear. They use same photos, same keywords to change the price slightly. Yeah, so um, I hope that you see less of it today than you did five months ago. Because what we have done globally on this is we are looking at the tracking of sellers and if it doesn't map the location that they said they were selling from um, we are um, we are penalizing them we've cracked down as I said tens of thousands of sellers have been kicked off the site um, you know mainly Chinese sellers um, we added delivery days um, I think for lo lo items that uh, look like they're located in Australia but we wasn't clear whether on in stock we added like 10 delivery days on those items. And so that affects you know, the ranking in search. Um, there's been a huge effort around this. Um, you know, and we're continuing to, to make sure that people aren't misrepresenting their location. We do have, I just want to be clear, we do have sellers on the platform who are located in other countries, but have warehouses set up in Australia. Um, and so they, they may be located overseas, but the item location is in Australia and, and that's legitimate. Um, yeah. So, so sometimes people get confused about that and they say, oh, how come this seller looks like they're an American seller, but they're saying it, the items in Sydney, but they may have a, a, a warehouse here and, and many sellers do that. Oops. That's right. Um, good question here. Will you ever allow sellers to have the option to hide how many items they have sold of each item. This puts some sellers off because of privacy reasons that affect their business information. Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. Um, you know, the reason that we have that is we've AB tested it and it really increases sales. Uh, so when people can see that something has been popular and sold a lot of items, um, we see that more people buy that. So, um, we do it because it drives conversion, but I'll take that one, um, you know, as to, as to whether um, we would ever let uh, some sellers opt out of providing that information. 
Cool. Nicole Hammond asks, is there a way to show if a buyer is a repeat buyer? This would be very helpful, please. Yeah, it's a great question as well. Um, I think that's something we could look at. I did remember seeing some data about um, eBay of all the marketplaces gets more repeat buyers that people tend to save sellers more and go back to the same seller um, more than any other marketplace. And, and it's because we kind of put the seller's brand um, and their identity out there more than some other marketplaces. But again, that's a, that's a good bit of feedback. And how can we help um, do that better? Yeah. Um, Carolyn Healy asks, how can you talk to someone in person at eBay? Having started another eBay business, however, unable to list more than three products. Why is this? Yeah, so, um, well, sorry, was it Karen? Um, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn, sorry, Carolyn. It's a great question. So, um, you, you understand when we, when a new seller starts on eBay, um, Sometimes we put limits on the amount of products they can sell um, to make sure that they are going to uh, deliver um, the first few that they promise. You'd understand we obviously have some fraudsters who start businesses on eBay, who sell a lot of stuff and they never actually deliver it. So we kind of put limits, um, but for good businesses that can restrict your sales. So um, you can email me and we can uh, get your limits um, lifted. You can also contact our customer service, um, and uh, as we also have a we have a, a partnership as, as uh, that works with new retailers and new businesses in Australia um, to help them um, get on. And, and so we have a team here as well that does that. Um, just email me, and, and um, I can connect you and get you some help. Great. Um... Would there be an option, ask Matt, um, to have a page builder option on the product description, as in I've seen on Amazon? You can add images and graphs to the product information. I feel like having more info, um, more than words, might drive more sales. No, it's another great suggestion. Um, you know, one, one of the things we have to balance is like, um, is the kind of the amount of critical information we give to customers, particularly on a mobile phone. There's a, a small cr screen there, but um, it's, a, it's a great suggestion and, and we'll take that one. Right. I've had uh, parcels late to deliver overseas, eBay refunded. Now they arrived. I'm still out of pocket. This is now over $500. Not really giving me a question. It's a... Um, yeah, I mean, on that one, Phil, I'd, just, I'd say, look, we're, we're really looking at this particular uh, case and, and how we can, um, um, you know, protect our sellers more when, when they've shipped and done the right thing. Okay, this one on feedback, always a touchy subject. Um, why does eBay always side with the buyer when negative feedback is left? This greatly affects my ongoing sales and eBay staff ref refuse to remove negative feedback. Even when I've proven that the buyer claims are false and lies. Oh, one, two. Hey, look, um, feedback, I would say one thing, negative feedback um, doesn't affect your standing, your standards, so whether you're top rated or above or below standard, um, unless, um, the, the buyer sort of escalates a claim and has is trying to make a, a money back guarantee claim. Um, I think uh, the other thing is that I'd say is that if you have buyers that are abusive, that you think are kind of trying to uh, rort you, you can report those buyers. We look at, we look at the kind of the history of buyers and whether they're making a lot of claims. Um, and, and, and that's one of the factors when we're considering uh, how to adjudicate. Um, I, look, I, I, I would just make a general comment we, that we don't always get it right, um, but um, we can all do a better job of providing better experiences to buyers. You know, that when buyers have a bad experience, they tend not to come back and that's not good for anyone. And so, you know, sometimes we, we, uh, we want to make sure that buyers having good experiences um, so that just one transaction doesn't put them off.
Well, I've got one last question for you, Tim. Um, it comes from Mark. How can you report a product that has been prohibited, that has a prohibited ingredient in it in Australia? I have reported it, but there's no change to the product. Tim, is that via the Vero system or is there another mechanism for people to report um, products which shouldn't be listed on the site? Yeah, um, the, the Vero systems for their, uh, for, you know, stuff that's a breach of intellectual property. Um, there's also the ability to report other um, listings. We had a lot of those with price gouging. I'm just going to need to check on exactly where you do that um, and how you do that for other prohibited goods. Um, again, you can send an email to me, T McKinnon at ebay.com and I'm um, happy to, to follow that one through for you. Wonderful, Tim. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a very informative session. I'm sure the sellers will be appreciative of you taking your time to join us today and, and share and also answer questions. Uh, um, some prickly ones in, ones in there, so well done on that. Um, we've got a big day ahead of eBay content, and thank you, uh, Mr. Tim McKinnon, for kicking it off. Thanks so much, Phil, and thanks, everyone, for the great questions and, and for your partnership at this challenging time. And enjoy the day. Thank you.